woman's back. Season two. This has been a rough road. Like this is the only consistent thing I've ever done on my channel was Batwoman. And that's, I don't, it, it's tragic. But truth be told, I do like doing it. It's fun. You guys are enjoying it, which is cool. And it's making me a lot of payola. I act like I hate it, but it's so fun. Now I did do a reaction with EFAP. Depending on when you're seeing this, it might be out already. If it isn't, then yeah, it's, it's coming. I was going to leave it at the EFAP reaction, but, but then I watched the episode again and I was like, okay, I miss so much shit. Because when you got five or six niggas laughing and joking at once, you're going to miss some shit. You, you're not going to be as attentive as you usually are. So I had to put my own personal touch on it. No offense to the EFAP boys because I had a fucking blast watching it with them. Uh, so let's get on with it. I have seen it twice already, but like every time, every single fucking time feels like the first time. You saw the whole debacle go down. Ruby Rose left the show. Now we enter Javicia Leslie, uh, Valen Valencia Orange, some shit. I don't know if she's going to be back either. <laughs> but yeah, Batwoman, she's black now. Okay. So that must mean that the show is vastly improved. Like writing, stellar, Emmy's gonna be flying out of their ass, acting top notch. I'm sure of it because let's just watch the fucking episode. I can't keep up with the charade. Last season on Batwoman. Previously on that season that I wasn't even a part of. You made me Bruce Wayne. I made me Bruce Wayne. Why does Bruce Wayne look more like the Joker than the Joker? I'm still perplexed by how this bitch is able to keep a lamp running in that van. I think the showrunners and writers are so out of touch, they don't know that. that homeless people who live in cars are not gonna waste their battery life over a fucking lamp while they are sleeping when they don't need it. See, this is some shit where, okay, the director was like, look, we need light in this scene. So let's just put a lamp in there. Make sure there's no cord showing so no one questions how fucking absurd this is. Oh, aren't we fancy? And your little girlfriend's are having an easier time sneaking in and out now. All right, to be honest, what I like about this is that her sexuality so far has not been made a big deal out of. Like they just, it's just a passing pleasant comment. Like, oh, you and your girlfriends. <laughs> she, there's no big fucking pride flag that unfurls behind them. I'll give you points for that. But like I said, I don't think it's going to last because remember the flags from the trailer. They gonna fuck it up. They're going to fuck it up. It's the same thing I said. Like, what the fuck? <laughs> Fucking Armageddon! Ooh! Avicia <gasps> Leslie is a better actress than Ruby Rose. <gasps> a little! <gasps> Kinda! Is Kate there? She hasn't checked in since she landed in Nashville City yesterday. Okay, so now we know Kate is still a dick, like, because this plane is crashing on the way back to Gotham. She had, she didn't even check in with him when she was at her destination. What a bitch! You still a bitch! Damn! Even in the, from the grave! <laughs> Can anybody move for something? Can anybody move for something? We got like PTSD flashbacks and dreams in the same fucking scene. It's so like janky. Oh, live. Why do they think that's adequate drama? Live! Live, damn it, live! <laughs> Pudding, come forth towards your destiny. <laughs> I just saw my future career. It's horrifying. What I love about this is that it's just, the suit is just there. It's not in a case or anything. It's just, it's just out. <laughs> Why? I will say the intro slightly better. They finally learn how to use Cinema 4D. Congratulations. What have you found? Sir, I don't think you should be anywhere around here right now. This is so fucking confusing. Okay, wait. Is this the GCPD captain or some shit? Or is this an employee from the Crows? And why the fuck is Sophie there, who's a member of the Crows, before Jacob? It did. And why is- and if the guy does work for the Crows, why is he giving the other guy orders? Even if he wasn't working for the Crows, he still shouldn't be- Wow! My fucking head hurts already. Like, it doesn't make any sense! No way. Bruce, I came as soon as I heard. I didn't come when the city was in disarray or when I found out my cousin was killing dozens of people. I came when my ungrateful ass thieving cousin <laughs> blew up in a plane crash. All right, this isn't suspicious at all. 
If anyone can help us, it's you. Oh, really? You're a female Bruce Wayne. I'm not about to let a man take credit for a woman's work. Oh, 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 damn! Really? Because according to the show, Bruce Wayne is about as useful as a condom with a hole in it. You okay? I stumbled on something pretty sick, kind of game changer. I changed my lace front from a side part to a middle because I think that accurately depicts my poverty. All those years teaching martial arts, surely there's a dojo that will hire you. A McDonald's warehouse work, a fucking Lyft driver. You have a van. <laughs> DoorDash driver, anything that will get you a, like a little bit of money. But no, I all I all the only options I have is dojo person. <laughs> There's plenty of like businesses who will hire ex-cons, so when when you take that into account, the scene becomes a lot more hilarious. You have the power to turn this around. Here we go, here we go. You wanna know why I haven't paid my fines? Because I can't find a job. Because I don't have a home, because no landlord wants to rent to an ex-con on post-release. <laughs> this is why you flesh out characters. This is why you make up a real backstory. We should have had like at least three episodes showing how Ryan lives while she's dealing with how to be Batwoman or whatever. I don't, but no, she just, we go from, oh, she's homeless and now, hey, I'm powerless. I can't do anything. No one cares that the dope wasn't mine or, or that the crows were dirty or that I'm actually a decent human. Okay, when the news first came out that Ryan Wilder was going to replace Kate Kane, they said that she was going to be a former drug runner. Now, suddenly, like, oh, the crows planted drugs on her and that's how she went to jail? Okay. Because with that, I was like, oh, I was hoping for maybe, okay, maybe we got some, uh, somebody, like, we got a redemption story. We got someone who goes from criminal to hero. Instead of contributing to the disintegration of society, I want to contribute to healing it. Uh, but now the crows are just dirty. They plant drugs on black women, whatever. Even though they never really showed us how the crows were dirty. They kind of just said they were. There was only like proof of like two dirty crows throughout the whole show. You showed me photographs of us being tailed by some mysterious woman named Sophia. You two had drama and I ended up in her crosshairs. Yeah, yeah, just recap everything from the first season. Because nobody gives a shit about your characters or your plot lines. If you know something about Kate's playing being I know what you know. I know what you know. <laughs> you shifted the search from rescue to recovery. Oh, the same people who convinced you to stop looking for Beth when she went missing? We can't listen to them. I thought... Catherine was the one who told him to stop looking for Beth, her and her people. And I thought he created the crows because of what happened with Beth. So we're just making shit up now. I mean, it's no different from uh, what the show usually does, but holy God, that is really blatant. You know Alice is Beth? Of course, they are my cousins. Do? Oh, stop making Luke dumb. <laughs> Skin mask people walking around able to seamlessly impersonate anybody. Doppelgangers, you've been betrayed before, hello? Why didn't you call or, or write or answer one of my 3,000 texts? Okay, wait a minute, hang on a second. Ha wait, he sent him 3,000 texts, like apparently, but he's surprised that Bruce knows that Alice is Beth. And if Luke hasn't been giving him the 411 this whole time, why the fuck not? You have to assume that if he's not answering, he's at least listening to what you're saying. Oh God. A sticky bomb launcher. Oh. It's just like the one from the Arkham games. This is why Kate flew to National City, to ask Cara Danvers if we could destroy one stupid piece of kryptonite before it got into the wrong hands. The only material on Earth strong enough to penetrate the bat suit. That's when has that been a thing? I mean, I don't even read comics, and even I think that sounds like bullshit. Okay. <laughs> look at his face! It doesn't, it doesn't even look like he can fill out a cow! Wait, where's the suit? Please don't tell me some woman has it! Can't you feel it Never again. Never again will I... I don't know what the fuck her problem is. <laughs> what is this fucking music? Are you ready for this ass? 
open. <laughs> what is it? Why now? Yeah, I really feel for this character that I got barely any backstory on. All her complaints are, I am poor and my mom is dead. That is it. Do we know about how that influences her drive to be a, to be a hero? No. Time to be powerful. Um, I've said this in the season two trailer reaction that wanting power should not be a fucking reason why you want to become a superhero because that is the fast track to becoming a super villain. Empathizing with others needs to come first before empathizing with yourself. That's kind of what Batman Begins was getting at. Bruce didn't suddenly become Batman as soon as his parents died. That's not how that works. For a while, like he was like kind of like coasting through life drifting around, vengeful and angry. He almost shoots a motherfucker in revenge. Then he reroutes. Then he tries to understand crime and how, how and understand what it does to society and people. He puts himself in the shit. And then he's like, now I'm Batman. Now I can do this shit. This is like if Batman had, oh, my parents are dead and I'm just gonna live on the streets and be angry all the time. And I hope some powerful weapon that I could use to my disposal to get revenge on those I hate doesn't, doesn't just fall into my lap. Oh, there it is. Now I'm gonna be powerful. Now I'm gonna kill these motherfuckers. I'm gonna give the writers the benefit of a doubt. Maybe she does eventually learn as the show goes on. Um, like I said, I'm gonna give him the benefit of a doubt. But I don't think that's gonna fucking happen because this is Batwoman. The last bitch didn't learn it. <laughs> so this bitch probably ain't gonna learn it. Who? Oh. Not get that girl. No. I give him points because, oh, they're making her look imperfect. Okay, fine. You get half a point, but like the other half is gone because anybody would have been smart enough to test the shit out <laughs> before using it. Ah! And I'm sorry, one of those bullets has had to have hit her mouth or any fleshy part of her. <laughs> A bulletproof bitches? A bulletproof bitches? <laughs> oh. A bulletproof bitches? Wait, what the? I'm bulletproof bitches. That's the trigger word for like the bat heat vision. Oh, the suit is on. Oh, you have to turn it on. That that limp ru rubber suit, you have to turn it on. So now, I'm taking what I want. That's a really... <laughs> that music coupled with this scene and what it implies is fucking hilarious. I'm taking what I want because I rape these bitches. <laughs> Because I fuck these bitches under false pretenses, so technically it's rape. I'm taking what I want. <laughs> <laughs> like yeah, families. <laughs> like, what is this fucking shit? I gotta hand it to you, Tommy. What the hell are you doing here? I got the most eligible bachelors playing find the tan lines why how is drunk alice any different from sober alice i wanted to kill her myself and you know what i'm just gonna fucking skip the scene because i can't it's getting to the point that i hate the character so much that i'm starting to hate the actress too like that's how bad this is i, ca I can't stand watching it anymore i can't stand this character anymore just get rid of her but she's a fan favorite what fucking fans hey bruce there's no steam coming out of the steam shower what the hell did you do that for? No reason at all, because reason doesn't matter. Aha, uh -huh, so quirky. And the writers are basically admitting that she has no motivation as a character. She just I does shit to do shit. Because on my planet, you are still Tommy Elliot. And if I so much as breathe a word, Bruce Wayne goes from being the meat in a top model sandwich to the guy with a stick for a face. I'm sorry, who the fuck is gonna believe you? I'm sure, pretty sure all he has to do is get cops in his pocket and put out like a fucking hit on you and it's over. Like, you don't have no fucking leverage over him anymore. Why would you make it? This is the thing, that's the, that's the stupid thing about this. Why would you make this nigga the most powerful person in the city? You idiot! Because not only is he Bruce Wayne, he can also be Batman. You made him, but now he can unmake you very easily. You fuck it. Get rid of this character. Oh, it smells like 
bland. Fancy seeing you here. Of course she's there. It's all her character's got. Kate? Kate? You're alive. No. You're black. No. <laughs> you might as well just give it back now, Miss. Wilder. Ryan. What's with the fucking attitude? You stole their shit. Dude is meant for a hero, not the lost and found. You tell that to the bored billionaire who found it in Batman's lost box. Okay, you threw some shade at Kate for co-opting Batman's shit, but you should call it what it is. She stole it. She stole his shit. And she didn't find anything. She stole it. Just like you kind of grave robbed her shit. Like y'all not, yeah, you think about it, her and Kane aren't really that different. So why do you think you're worthy of wearing it? Because I'm a number. Yes, two, four, six, oh, one. I am the 327th baby of a black woman who died during childbirth that year. <laughs> you're like, Mary's like, what the fuck does that have to do with anything? I'm inmate 4075 serving 18 months for a crime I didn't commit. But I can live with all those numbers because to mama who adopted me, I was her number one. And your fucking monologue is number two. This monologue kind of sounds familiar to me. Oh, I got numbers coming out of my ears. For instance, 10. That's how many months old my baby girl is. Or six. That's how old my other daughter is. Eight is the age of my son. Two is how many times I've been married and divorced. 16 is the number of dollars I have in my bank account. 8503943. That's my phone number. And with all the numbers I gave you, I'm guessing zero is the number of times you're going to call it. I see a monologue. I want it painted black. Ooh, ooh, we threw a little bit of shade at our bad writing, the writing that we did last season. This season will be so much better than last one. No, you're just replacing the other bad writing with new bad writing. Instead of Kate King saying, I need to be Batwoman because I'm a woman, you got this chick saying, I need to be Batwoman because I'm black and poor. Like, <laughs> like, yay! You're still fucking up. <laughs> so you can have this damn suit back when her killer is dead. I deserve to be a hero, even though I'm gonna tarnish the name of this hero by murdering a fucking criminal. Uh, okay, whatever. I have a lead on Gotham's most elusive terrorist. Batwoman. I'm referring to Alice. Oh, that chick who killed exactly. my wife and kidnapped me and all this shit. Right. Bruh. Bruce? Julia Pennyworth. Julia Pennyworth. Just trying to remind myself of exactly what your name is since I'm not really Bruce Wayne. Because no normal human being says the first and last name of someone they already know. The Kane family has turned their 56th floor Riverside penthouse into a search party headquarters. Hmm. Huh. That would be nice, 56 floors up. Talk about optimal sunlight. You live outside. There's more than enough fucking sunlight in your van right now. In her statement, Kate said it's paradoxical to fight on behalf of an institution that sees my sexual orientation as the enemy. Okay, that's kind of badass. Oh, now she's not a privileged white girl because she's gay. <laughs> that little loophole. <laughs> And if you remember the circumstances of Kate's dishonorable discharge from the military, this becomes really fucking funny. Let me just fucking just go back and watch my reactions for season one. And you'll understand how fucked this is. Most recently, she opened the Hold Up, a gay bar that she called a safe haven for anyone looking for their family. Kate's a hero. Even when criticizing how shitty her character is, they still have to boost her and hold her up as this noble creature when she literally fucking isn't. But I'm not surprised that the people who would write season one the way it was don't understand heroism. They don't understand nobility. They don't understand really saying anything good at all. <laughs> You're telling me the landlord didn't know a bunch of niggas were squatting in his, in his building? And like, it's the Wonderland gang. It's not like a couple crackheads in the closet. It's like a whole troop of niggas. <laughs> Just make it believable so I can feel sorry for your shitty character. Please. Her mom died in her arms. She wants justice. Okay. Which means what? That doesn't automatically make a hero. Because she said she uh, wanted to kill Alice. Now keep in mind, bad people don't kill. I thought we made that a point last season. I'm just reflecting on my career choices thus far. I mean, it's my fault. I was the one hell-bent on destroying the kryptonite. It's not noble to take fucking credit for a bad thing you didn't do. It's just annoying. What would Kate say? 
say if she knew you were blaming yourself? She'd tell you that there'd be no Batwoman without Luke Fox. No, she wouldn't. She would not. Breath. I saw he had a drink in the commander's office, ran the glass for Prince. Damn. All right, f finally a character that's fast on their feet. <laughs> that grin, dude. That's keeping me sane throughout this whole thing. Where is it, pussy boy? Where is it, pussy boy? Is that what he said? <laughs> Oh, that's CGI! Oh, that makes a perfect hole! Dust! And oh, there's a hole! On it, green! <laughs> Who wants to see the most generic looking Batmobile? I mean, it's literally just a fucking car. This fucking car wouldn't even make it to the Fast and the Furious. And what's the point if most of the shots are fucking CGI? He's gonna have to ride. Ryan? Why? Suit. How would he even fit the suit anymore? It fits a woman now, and it's perfection. <laughs> oh god, why didn't you bring back up, you fucking monkey? I'm not making the same mistakes I made with you. Just shoot her in the head. Like, be a good father for once. If you don't believe me, turn on the bat signal. Let's see if she comes. That woman wouldn't come anyway because they're kind of rivals now. She might think it's a trap to come for him to come pop a cap in her ass. So, yeah, that's dumb. <laughs> He's at, how long have you been driving? It's fucking nighttime, and he left when it was the afternoon. Oh wow, that CGI. Oh yeah, I'm losing him in my sluggish, broke down Volkswagen van. Yeah. Oh, see, this is one of the things I missed when I was reacting with EFAP. I had no idea he was singing the Jingle Bells, Batman Smells, Robin laid an egg song. Robin smells, Robin oh, ooh, ah, it hurts. Why? Oh, it just, it's smelly. This is suck. Here's a sentence I've never said before. Can you hack the Batmobile? Yeah, that's a sentence you shouldn't say at all because he should definitely have functionality through the Batmobile from the control room. Cause that should that should be standard. What the fuck? I'm in. And the lone rocket makes it to the US Capitol. <laughs> My weak bat chin pisses me off! Oh, they're still using Cinema Sins effects. <laughs> That is so fucking lame! You're not Bruce Wayne. Mm-hmm. <laughs> he was doing it! Um. So hang on! So hang on! Oh, whoa. Whoa. oh, this is the Catwoman soundtrack right here. Ooh! find a way to incorporate that clip in every future reaction. I swear to God. That's fucking hilarious. No! <laughs> the baloney just slid right off. She may have been a little judgy when we first met her. She did a good job filling in today. She did a good job Is filling in this one time. Uh, running away from a guy and putting on the suit and kind of beating his ass and uh, going postal when he killed her plant. Because that's the that's the mark of a mentally stable person. <laughs> we were a bit judgy. No, you would judge correctly. She's a fucking grave robber who thinks she's owed this suit because, well, I struggled, so, you know, just give me the fucking suit so I can kill somebody. Even though Batman doesn't kill. So it would be a gross uh, perversion of what he's about. What about everything that you said? What, what about your mom? Well, it's actually just pandering for the audience. You know, I didn't really need to say it. I can't believe you actually fell for it. That's suited. It's bigger than me. It's one thing to put it on and it's another thing to wear it. <laughs> what the fuck does that mean? Like you said, Kate was a hero. I'm not. No, that's not true. Neither of you fucking are. Hey, Sophie. 
if you're reading this. That nigga, that ain't Kate's voice. <laughs> Fuck. Your lying to you is the hardest thing I've ever done. But I lied because I love you. <laughs> And I shamed you for being closeted against your uh, homophobic parents because I love you. <laughs> I'm sorry, but oh god, knowing how much of a cunt Kate was, especially to Sophie, I don't give a fuck. Kate didn't even have the fucking courtesy to do ADR for her own letter. <laughs> you would push me away. Oh. <laughs> The single tear crying. Oh. Everybody said, but I don't give a damn. Oh. How the fuck did she know she was right there? I did the right thing today, Mama. But not only does she talk to her plant, she thinks it's her fucking mother. That's that's even worse. <laughs> So you're just noticing some glowing green shit flowing through your bloodstream? Okay. Kryptonite poisoning. Yeah, so that that's it. That just as bad as it ever was. Is she a better actress than Ruby Rose? Yeah, kinda, sorta, marginally, a little bit. But because the material is still bad. It doesn't really matter how good of an actress she is. It's like putting lipstick on a pig. It's not going to do anything. I, re I remember them promising Ryan Wilder was going to be a former drug runner, but they changed that. It's like they were afraid, like, oh, we can't have a black character actually have a background where they might not have been so squeaky clean. So we got like, oh no, the crows just fucking planted drugs on her. I, I'm not going to lie, I am kind of interested in how they're going to deal with that kryptonite poisoning thing. And you know it's just gonna be some ridiculous shit. They might use this opportunity to bring back the uh, the cure-all blood that that uh, Mary supposedly has. And she'll give Ryan some kind of transfusion and, that, and that'll be settled within the first like 20 minutes of the episode. Alice, like I said before, I'm completely done with this bitch. I don't care. She's like white noise at this point. Same thing goes for Sophie and Julia. I just watch for the cringe. There's nothing... Other than that, to look forward to. Oh yeah, and remember when Caroline Dries specifically said she wasn't gonna kill off Kate Kane because she didn't want to contribute to the barrier gaze trope? But like, she slightly, very slightly kills Kate Kane off without killing her off. Someone like me, who can decode um studio jargon, she definitely killed off Kate Kane. The pirate bitch killed her. She's she died in that crash. She left a fucking note telling Sophie that she was Batwoman. She's dead. She's fucking dead. Like, come on, bruh. This is the guy you cast as Bruce Wayne. He that creepy ass grin. <laughs> Actually, you know what? To be honest, I that's the only thing I would have been interested in. If they had kept him around to be some kind of like dark Uber Batman, and he goes about as Bruce Wayne trying to take down Batwoman, and he probably says a lot of sexist and racist shit. Like, he's just, like, he's based Batman. He's based Bruce. <laughs> You're like, you want to impress me. If you want to give me that social justice warrior bullshit, even it out with some over-the-top, like, far-right-leaning crazy shit. Please! Like, our new, strong, powerful, black Batwoman is trying to, like, is trying to help out the culture and the people. And Bruce Wayne comes out of his mouth with some shit like, oh, she's got a lot of fro, but not much brains. And he swigs, and he takes a belt of brandy. But they're not going to do that. They're not going to make it nice and equal for like maximum entertainment. Of course, they're not going to do that. Yeah, I wish they would have kept him around as like Uber Bruce Wayne. That would have been that would have been funny. That would have been hilarious. So yeah, of course, I'm going to continue on with season two as usual until it's not interesting anymore. But I don't know. I think the cringe might keep my attention. That's it. Thanks for watching. And we'll be back here uh, next week with episode two.